As public health researchers, we know that improving health is about a lot more than what happens when you get sick. We look upstream to the factors that influence health from an early age. We know it's partly about where you live, and schools, and access to health care. But we're never going to solve this puzzle, especially for people of color, until we deal with another piece, the justice system. It turns out our justice system is terrible for your health and affects more people than you might think. We're at the point where an 18-year-old male in California was more likely to be arrested than vote in 2014. How did this happen? In the 1980s, we started thinking that harsh punishment was going to solve our health problems. Schools began kicking kids out for minor misbehavior, especially kids of color, starting in preschool. Each suspension increases the odds of a student dropping out and getting into trouble with the law. And what's a top predictor of suspensions? Childhood trauma. In communities of color, the war on drugs became a war on people, those with mental illness and the drug addicted. More mentally ill people are in prisons and hospitals, and being behind bars makes most health problems worse. Every year in prison takes two years off your life expectancy. It's devastating for the health of families and communities. Half of all people in prison are parents. Their babies are far more likely to die before their first birthday. In neighborhoods, high rates of incarceration create a community environment that makes mental health worse for everyone, even for those who haven't been arrested. The result of all this? California's prison population has soared 500% since the 1980s. At current trends, one in three African-American men will be behind bars in his lifetime. And in California, Latinos are 44% more likely than whites to be incarcerated for the same crimes. Spending on prisons has skyrocketed. Since 1980, California has built 22 prisons, but just one UC campus. Every dollar spent on incarceration is a dollar we can't spend on health, education, and prevention. As youth leaders, we get it. That's why safety in schools and neighborhoods are our top priorities. We're building a statewide movement, and it's getting results. New policies have led to a 34% drop in suspensions. That means 120,000 more kids are in school, not on the street. Voters approved Proposition 47, bringing some common sense back to sentencing for nonviolent offenses. So far, judges have given over 4,000 people a second chance. That's thousands of years of life given back to families. Up to 1 million people may be able to have old nonviolent felonies removed from their records. That means new opportunities for jobs, housing, and better health. But we're not done yet. Let's do the math. Prop 47 savings plus more money for schools equals billions more for communities. That means more positive school discipline that keeps kids in school. More support for people as they leave prison. More youth programs. More substance abuse and mental health services. Healthier food. More money for sports programs. California is leading the way as people across communities and political lines say, it's time to end this culture of punishment and replace it with a culture of prevention.